Oh, I'm sorry. Did I break your concentration? Somewhere between science and superstition. Such sights to show you. Strange Eons. Welcome to Strange Eons Radio. That is Eric up there. Hello. That's Vanessa over there. Hello. I'm Kelly. Hey, you guys. Um, I decided to start the new year off with some credit card fraud, so that's always lovely. Uh, um, what? Where I was, I was, I don't even know why I was looking at this purchase that I got on my card, and I do everything. All my banking is online and everything, and and it just showed up as a processing a seventy dollar fee from Roadrunner Sports. And I was like, Roadrunner Sports, oh, look at me. I haven't been in a Roadrunner Sports in many a year. <laughs> and I uh, I decided to then see if I had any other fees from them. Yes, for the last three years, they've charged me $69.99 on, at the end of December. And I was like, what is this? And I kept, I did some research. Roadrunner Sports doesn't even have anything that they, they do a month or a yearly uh, VIP thing yeah. but that's 49.99 mm. and then i was mm. like is is there something i'm subscribing to that is for some reason coming through roadrunner sports and i, I just couldn't think of anything i was like is it my <laughs> vpn is it you know yeah. one of the programs i bought i couldn't think of anything so i called up the bank to ask them to to stop it and i, I got a real nice guy but then he just immediately you know canceled my card. We'll send you a new card. And I was like, ah, I actually, I want to keep this card. He's too late. Canceled. I'm like, well, <laughs> there we go. So now it's... I, I've been getting, um, little notes from like Patreon and, uh, places, you know, your payment did not go through this time. And I'm like, yes, I know yep. it's coming in. It's coming tomorrow. I will fix it all tomorrow. It's, it's good to refresh these things every once in a while because you never know. Like there there's some weird stuff out there that people can get a hold of your, your shit and be charging weird little transactions in the background. So it's it doesn't hurt. I had kind of a weird thing, too. It wasn't bank fraud, but uh, I we the first time we used this, I had some big problems connecting with a speed that was even decent. So I... I'll just get a new modem. You know what? I'm not going to play Xfinity Rent anymore. I'll buy one offline. So I got one from Amazon, listed as brand new. I uh, got it, plugged it in, called to activate it. I'm going to skip a bunch of story because it was really stupid and annoying. But by the end, it turned out that this modem was registered at Xfinity to somebody else. And they Weird. can't. They can't stop that the person who's got it registered has to stop it so i immediately packed the modem out <laughs> sent it back and said guess i'm paying rent again <laughs> and got a new <laughs> modem from Xfinity. like jesus oh you know, what a pain. Did, the modem, did the modem look new when it arrived the box was obnoxiously sealed i mean it was like hard to get into it the way it was put together and so it felt mm. very new. All, it was all wrapped. It had all the wire tags uh, wrapped around everything. It looked completely new. But uh, that's mm. why. Wow, crazy. The, well, the, the first operator I talked to apparently didn't know what they were doing and couldn't figure out why it wasn't connected and just kept me there for an hour. The second one I talked to was very good. And within like 10 minutes is going, uh, yeah, we're not going to ever be able to <laughs> to make this modem for you. <laughs> like, oh, okay, great. Wow. <laughs> That's so, so weird. wild. Luckily, the Xfinity Man. store is not too far from me, so I just got the car and went and picked it up because, man, if you don't have internet, you don't got Wi-Fi right now, it's tough to do anything, Since my, especially since Dina works from home, too. So she's like, uh, got a meeting. <laughs> I think you're missing it. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> Seems to be working now. I did get to watch some some cool stuff this week. And mm. one of them that I really want to push on everybody is a documentary that's on Tubi 
from this year, and it is called Satan Wants You. And it is the story surrounding the book Michelle Remembers. And Mm. it gets into, you know, Michelle Remembers was really like ground zero for the satanic panic. And it was about this girl who, um, through regressive hypnotherapy, started remembering that she was used as a... uh, as a sex slave for Satanists and all of this stuff. And then it just exploded into, you know, uh, the childcare places being examined for underground tunnels and all of this shit that happened in the eighties because of the satanic panic. And this really talks about this woman and her therapist and, you know, spoiler, how none of that happened. Yeah. But uh, really, really fascinating documentary, Satan Wants You on Tubi. It's dark. It's a tough, tough watch. Uh, and maybe it's because of my dad was a psychologist at that time and was in the middle of he hated regression therapy. He thought that the odds of somebody planting a memory in your head or helping you plant a memory ahead or so much more likely than you regressing memories that horrible and not having any knowledge of them at all, especially when everybody else in the family mm. is like, nothing like that ever happened. And so this, right. uh, it was powerful stuff. Learn from history. It should be wow. why I, you watch this movie. I'm glad you watched it. Yeah, it was definitely one of those ones that... Um... I I missed out on SIF this year. I, I had some tickets and I had some films pe- picked out and that was definitely one of them that stood out, but um, didn't manage to check it out. Um, so I will hunt that down. And you said it's on Tubi? Yeah, it's on Tubi. I think it's listed as of one of their originals. Well, I, uh, gosh, it's, I feel like I don't even like superhero stuff that much. I don't know why this is all I ever talk about. <laughs> but um, <laughs> what if season two has begun? Oh. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I haven't seen all of it. Um, I'm about halfway through. Um, well, <laughs> they sure are just taking properties that exist and putting characters into it. So we had one that was very Blade Runner esque. We've had one that was Ooh. Die Hard and we've had one that was Mad Max. So... <laughs> Original content. Cool. <laughs> I will say this. Uh, yeah, very derivative, but still better than most of the, you know, way better than like Secret Invasion or better than oh God. Uh, yes. Obi-Wan, you know. So and the, the animation is so gorgeous that I'm kind of yeah. fine with it. I think they did it even better animation this year. Maybe I'm crazy, but it feels like even like they pumped more money towards it and they have a more original voice, not original, more voice actors of the people who actually play them in the films. Right. Uh, Save for, uh, save for a few exceptions. Like of course, Robert Downey Jr. And Brie Larson doesn't want to do it. You can, you can tell who's like, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I don't need to, (laughs) I don't need to show up for this. And other people were like, I will take that paycheck. Thank you very much. Uh, right. uh, <laughs> the so. guy that does the Robert Downey Jr. voice is fantastic, though. Man, he's got he him does down. great. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, that one sounds really good. And every once in a while, you'll get somebody who is the actual voice, but it doesn't sound like it for some reason. Um, it sounds but anyway, like uh, somebody making fun of this person. <laughs> um. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Or like, oh, God, this is a really vanilla version of that. <laughs> hmm, weird. And it's like, oh, crap, I, it's them. Okay. I watched uh, all of it. And yeah, my, my takeaway was this was not a bad way to watch a series. I thought it was really interesting that they released it daily, one a day. Which that was, is weird. Yeah. So they're they're definitely trying stuff because the uh, the new Echo show that's going to be coming out that's going to be uh released all at once so it it, they're they're definitely trying to see what sticks and how people are going to continue subscribing interesting yeah and i i worry that they have very little faith in echo honestly but we'll we'll see we'll see how it goes i have very little faith in echo well that might be why they're dumping it all at one night so that people 
don't talk about it over a course of weeks. Yeah. I'm wondering always, about that. Always possible. <laughs> I've got another kind of home invasion one, I guess you'd call it, uh, the um, Sacrifice game, directed by Jen Rexler, hmm. who did The Ranger. Oh, yeah, I heard about this. Um, <laughs> Brian from the Lovecraft Festival, I think, summed it up quite well when he said it was, I think the word he used was... Uh, sweet or cute or something like that because although the opening scene is incredibly intense and disturbing violence most of the rest of them are charming that was the word he used most of the rest of the word movie is not even though a group of people going around uh killing people for a reason and they end up in this uh private school and they've captured three people, and there's the three people, and it just doesn't have that sense of menace. You know, that problem usually with makes home invasion movies so hard to watch is that what are they going to do to these people? It didn't have so much of that, but the acting was good. It was well, it was a fun story. And I was kind of like, well, it's fine. And then I read Brian saying, it's charming. It's like, you know what? That is the perfect word for this movie. <laughs> it's a charming invasion <laughs> movie. <laughs> so. It's on Shutter, so you know if you feel the the need for I want an invasion movie, but they're so disturbing. Try this one. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, is it also a holiday movie? I don't think so. No. Uh, well, I was going to talk about what if, but I guess what you guys are going to get now is uh, my mini review of The Devil Conspiracy, which is on oh. Hulu. This is a brand new horror film but I think direct to Hulu that feels like it was made in 1994 it's it's over the top horror bizarre uh, and it's about it literally opens up with uh, God throwing Satan into hell and Michael showing up and chaining him down there and then it's like you know a million years <laughs> later uh, there is this group of people who are fooling around with um, genome codes and and basically they are cloning people from their DNA but they're cloning uh, they're cloning like Shakespeare or Michelangelo or you know they're making these babies and they're selling them to these very wealthy people uh, so that they'll have the next Michelangelo or something like that. And it turns out that all of these wealthy people. So, okay. So right there, that's, that's a, a story idea, right? Yeah. If you just tossed out Lucifer getting thrown, you've just got this group of people doing this kind of science fiction story, right? And, uh, and it turns out that they're planning on stealing the shroud of Turin so that they can get Jesus Christ's DNA, right? So, so there's, there's one part of this movie. <laughs> The other part is this supernatural part where uh, Satan is, you know, slowly breaking the chains and he's going to be coming back into the world. And then you find out that these people who are doing the cloning, they are all Satanists. So they're doing this cloning so that they can bring him back up. And then it's also a bizarre action flick where... Uh, the Archangel Michael has come down and he has possessed the dead body of this priest and he is trying to save this woman who has been impregnated by Satan and is going to be, it's, this movie is bonkers. It's not very good. I watched the entire thing. I had to get a second bowl of popcorn. I was so enthralled with it. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, I don't know if you like those kind of stupid movies from the early 90s. This one is right there for you. The Devil oh, Conspiracy. Oh, my God. Weird. That sounds freaking insane. It is. It is freaking insane. It, the effects, as soon as the effects at the beginning start, I mean, when God throws Satan out, <clears throat> it looks really cool because the, the universe just kind of opens up like an eye and you see mm -hmm. Satan come shooting out of the iris and then <laughs> down onto earth and then burrowing into what will then become hell. And I was like, what the fuck am I watching? So. <laughs> wow. Is it live action or is it animated? <laughs> it's live action. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God brain okay 
Hmm. Well, um, since we're, uh, I know that in the last episode, we talked about like all the kind of Oscar Beatty stuff that's coming out and uh, some of those big picture films that apparently are on New York Times's top 20 <laughs> and I've never heard of a single one of them. Yeah. Um, so I went ahead and checked out The Holdovers. Oh, yeah. And yeah, it was, you know, I, it was a really charming little kind of Christmas film really feels like it's based on a book um yeah good good <laughs> acting there's uh i don't i think there's a cgi eyeball thing happening because um is it paul giamatti that's in this as, as well uh where like the whole thing behind his character it's either like a um contact lens or they're doing CGI where one of his eyes is um, not in sync with the other. And it's like part of his character development. And there's no way that any actor on planet Earth <laughs> could make their eye do that that much in one movie. So whatever movie magic they got going on in there, they, they did an excellent job. Um, but yeah, it, I think it's a cool little cool little drama. Not necessarily for um, the typical fare for our, our listeners. Definitely no horror or sci-fi or any kind of. Oh, it's just some um, a, a private school with some kids going through some shit. The holdovers. Oh, cool. the holdovers. Well, my other one is uh, something Vanessa recommended earlier this year, which I finally finished. Is a uh, Blue Eye Samurai. Yeah, uh, that is good. The I didn't yeah. look. Is that an American made? Japan, or is it Jack? Because uh, I watched the dubbed version because it looked like that's how it was made. Um, yeah, I think there is only a dubbed version. Well, the, the spectacular. <laughs> the voice actors they got really, really nailed it. It's really good. One problem for me is I looked at the IMB thing and misread how many episodes there were. So I got to episode eight, thought there was one more. I'm going, what in the hell is going to follow this up? <laughs> like you'd mentioned before, they could have wrapped this as a solo season, but I look forward to seeing what they do next. <laughs> so, well worth checking out on Netflix. Looks like it's a French-American adult animated action. Uh, so, produced by Jane Wu. Um, a French studio, Blue Spirit. So, yeah, so not actually just uh, really loving on that Japanese style, but not actually a Japanese um, anime. That's pretty good. Are you, so, are you saying that it's only seven episodes then? or It's, it's eight. It's eight. It's eight. The, oh, it is eight I'm going to be this okay. at nine because I forgot, you know, when you've got another season coming, they'll just drop that season and say one episode before they know any knowledge. Uh, so, like, oh, shit. But uh, whew, it's really, really well done. It is definitely an adult mm. animation, too. <laughs> I'm so oh. glad you checked it out. And, yeah, it is um, vicious. Mm -hmm. It is, there is rough shit you will see. Um, but I feel like the story justifies it in a way that it's not, like, seeing disgusting stuff for the sake of it. Yeah. 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 Plus, you know, lots of animated dongs running around. She sees a lot of them. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> you know what I love. <laughs> um, Nothing more okay, than. Okay, that's, that's Blue-Eyed Samurai, which is on um, Netflix, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Well, all right, guys, how about we take a little break, and then when we come back, our subgenre topic is snow. <laughs> One of the greatest heroes of them all. Dr. X is destroying the polar ice cap. But Polar Mission Action Man teams up with Blizzard, his fearsome wolf, and are hot in his trail. With electronic sound and flaring polar missile, Blizzard is unleashed. Man. One of the greatest heroes of them all. And runs X down. Chill out, X. New Action Man, Polar Mission, and Blizzard. Dr. X sold separately. Hello? Let's see who's called the Strange Eons Radio Hotline. 
Hey, guys. Uh, it's Micah. Long time no see. I feel, as I sit here after being sick for two weeks and reading loads of Ninja Turtles and Fist of the North Star and watching horrible, horrible ninja movies, that maybe it's about time for there to be just one more ninja episode. That's all I got. But do a sick man a favor. If you'd like to call the Strange Eons Radio Hotline, dial 253-237-4266. Nobody hangs up on me. We have returned. Uh, we're back to our old kind of format, Vanessa, and you chose our subgenre for this episode. I did. I did. Um, I really felt like there was a lack of uh, winter wonderland in our themes lately. So I wanted to make us all talk about films that were featuring snow or snow related product like avalanches or <laughs> snow, you know. snow related product. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, Not really. <laughs> also, give me the opportunity to watch the world's longest film because it's a miniseries. And that is Storm of the Century from 1999. A storm is coming. The kind you can't prepare for. The last one of the century. It's bringing something with it. Something you've never seen before. me what I want, and I'll go away. Refuse me, and I assure you, I can punish. For the first time ever, a Stephen King original, written directly for the screen by the master himself. What could he possibly want? Sure, we'll find out. Only one man. Only one network. <laughs> dares to be this original. Give me what I want, and I'll go away. ABC is taking February by storm. <laughs> Stephen King's Storm of the Century, February 1999. I don't know if either of you guys saw this. Maybe oh, when it God, came out. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I There's a lot of Stephen King stuff out there that I have missed out or have not yet dived into. So this was... Uh, one of those. Um, Rotten Tomatoes score of 83% from critics and 83% from audience. Um, directed by Craig R. Baxley. He has 33 credits to his name. Nine episodes of A-Team, Action Jackson, Dark Angel, Dark Angel, Stone Cold, Rose Red, Kingdom Hospital Series in the U.S. Um, also uh, does did a lot of stunts. 101 stunts, including Predator, 21 Jump Street. Uh, all of the A-Team um, and all of Dukes of Hazard seems to have stopped doing stunts around 89 and swapped to directing. And of course, this is written by Stephen King. 365 credits to his name. Um, <laughs> Maximum shit. Overdrive, Kingdom Hospital, US, which I did not realize. Creep Show, Shawshank, Salem's Law, Pet Cemetery, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, Starring Colm Fiar as Andre the Stranger, who has 173 credits to his name. Thor Face Off, and recently the Umbrella Academy as Reginald Hargreaves, which is what I knew him from. Tim Daly as Mike, 82 credits, uh, including 120 episodes of Madam Secretary, 98 episodes of Private Practice, and 52 episodes of Superman, the animated series as Clark Kent slash Superman. And Jeffrey DeMunn as Robbie, 120 credits, including 75 episodes of Billions. Um, 19 episodes of Walking Dead, The Mist, Green Mile, Shawshank Redemption. So I feel like some of these Stephen King people end up somehow back in the King verse. So, uh, pretty, pretty interesting. Oh, oh, yes, I know. You should probably I was wondering if you were I just figured you were doing it. 
I'm doing this it. This timer. All right. Well, uh, if you need to knock a minute or two off, I get it. Uh, so the story follows a big storm is making its way towards Little Tall Island in Maine in 1989. Some of the residents think it's no big deal, while others are stockpiling like crazy. A strange man arrives along kind of with the storm just right before it hits at Martha Clarendon's home, a very slow moving, very old lady enjoying her TV and a cup of tea. Um, he knocks on the door, she opens, and he brutally murders her with a cane that has a silver wolf head on the top. He leaves the door open and the body where she lay and steals her tea and proceeds to sit in her chair and wait. Meanwhile, Mike Anderson, a supermarket manager and part-time constable, is trying to keep the store going, the little small town store, um, while people are having a kind of a run on goods right before the weather hits. He is a good guy. His wife calls and needs his help at her daycare that she's running out of their house because a girl got her head stuck between two of the rails and him and the dad of the girl who also works at the supermarket run over. Um, and he lovingly gets this kid's ha head out. He is a hero. He <laughs> is just always making the right decisions um, when everyone else around him is maybe struggling a little bit. Meanwhile, a teenager sees um, the old lady's walker strewn down the stairs in front of her house. So he goes to check up on her, finds her brutally dead and sees Andre Lenage hanging out in her chair. Um, Andre tells the kid that he sucks at basketball and the kid <laughs> runs off to tell everyone that the lady's been murdered. Uh, Robbie, the pushy town manager and real estate sleazy guy, uh, goes to check in on this whole situation, uh, tries to kind of take over it. But um, when he confronts Lenage, um, Lenage knows some of the worst things that Robbie has ever done in his life and tells it back to him. So uh, Robbie kind of freaks out. He goes outside with a gun and sits there until Mike shows up because, of course, he is the constable. So Mike and Hatch arrest the guy, put him in jail. Seems weirdly easy to do. However, Lenage on the way into the cell tells various people at the grocery store because, of course, the jail cell is behind the grocery store. <laughs> um, you have to go through it. It's fine. He tells many of the patrons uh, their deepest, darkest secrets aloud, and the whole small town starts to get stirring. Um, within the jail cell, we start to see that Lenage is more than just a guy who happens to know too much. He also seems to have telekinetic powers. He can force people to do things and to um, do things for themselves and other people. And also, he starts leaving these notes through other people that say, Give me what I want and I'll go away. However, he doesn't exactly tell people what he wants for like five hours of a <laughs> six hour program. So, of course, the storm worsens. It's impossible for them to pass Lenage off to the mainland. They're stuck with him. They're discovering he's weirdly powerful. And um, there are just tons of murders and suicides happening all over town. Uh, in the end, I don't even know how much I should tell about what happens. It's I'd a say 20 okay. year old TV series. <laughs> <laughs> Skip ahead if you don't want spoilers. Lenage is a weird, power, powerful wizard, I guess. <clears throat> and he wants something from the townspeople. And that is something to do with their children. Um, and of course, Mike who um, is the one guy who is the good guy in town and is trying to help everyone make the right decisions and is continuously putting the moral questions up front before what's easy or convenient or um, makes him feel better. He's the one who's going to have the most sacrifice given uh, his, his child is essentially the one that gets taken away. So <clears throat> thought. What a ballsy ass ending. <laughs> this is a ballsy ass ending. They're like, cool. So, um, yeah, everything sucks. And this poor guy got fucked and he basically pieces out and good for him. <laughs> good for him for leaving because everyone in this town sucks and his <laughs> wife sucks and I hate her. 
I hate her the whole time. She's like, yeah, we should just give up our child. It's fine. Don't worry about it. It's like, what is your problem? She also is not very good at her daycare job. So take that lady. Um, (laughs) It's not a super satisfying ending. There's this weird constant religion thing where they're talking about Legion and they're quoting the Bible and it does not pan out. It does not mean anything. Don't worry about it. Apparently. Don't don't worry about any of those connections you start to draw because it will have no rhyme or reason in the story. A um, little bit of trivia. Colm Fear took it upon himself to make friends with all the child actors because um, he didn't want any of them to be genuinely scared of him. He's the one that's playing the stranger. Uh, the cane that Andre Linage has is the same one that Stu Redman used in The Stand from 1994. Also, I thought it looked exactly like the cane from Wolfman. But that's just me. Um, this is Stephen King's favorite television special of his own. Uh, it has the same setting as Dolores Claiborne. A cat reads, uh, boy, the character's cat reads a book to the children, the little puppy, which Danny Torrance loved in The Shining. It's created for screen. And then there was a script that was later published as a book. So this was a Stephen King joint just for this. And um, Laneige's name is a twist on a French word for snow. Laneige. Which is uh, also apparently in the story meant to be Legion. Uh, it was set for Blu-ray, but Warner Brothers delayed it. And the director, Mike Flanagan, cited, has cited Storm of the Century as a major influence on his 2021 Netflix miniseries Midnight Mass. So nice. that's mine. Wow, three minutes under the time. I'm just going to turn the buzzer off. Woo! <laughs> Vanessa, yeah. did you did you like it? I don't know. I mean, I I feel pretty mad because I spent six hours watching it, and I really needed it to like tie up at least a little bit more for all of that sitting through it, and it didn't. But there were some cool things going on in it. Like, I, I, I don't hate that I saw it. I'm not like, I don't want my time back. I just want it to have ended better. So that's me. Yeah, I, I think I feel the same way. I'm surprised this yeah. is King's favorite thing. He wrote the screenplay, which I know he doesn't do a lot of himself. Mm-hmm. So I guess he only has himself to blame. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, um, that's why he loves it. it yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It is a very unsatisfying ending for sure. A hundred percent. Yeah. And there, there's also this weird moment when um, he sees his kid and the the guy in New York, like right. uh, walking or no, in San Francisco. And they're walking down the street and he's just like, my child. And he like kind of catches up to them. And the child is like fucking evil. And you're like, oh, right. he's not going back. That's the end of that. Glad we had that in here for some reason. <laughs> I think I kind of liked that ending at least. At but, least yeah, at uh, least it's something. But r- right. God, yeah. yeah. Well, all right. Now you never have to watch that again. <laughs> yeah. Turns out uh, people are bad. That's the moral of that story. <laughs> people are not redeemable. And if you <laughs> give them the opportunity to redeem themselves, and maybe that somehow ends up being the way the plot could move forward. I- it won't happen. <laughs> They'll just suck and continue to lie. So good job, humans. Eric, I am putting uh, 10 minutes on Sounds the timer. Sounds good. All righty. Well, with a little more recent one from 2014, Dark Was the Night. I think we might be dealing with something that's not easily explained. Been out in the woods lately? Into the trees? All the animals just up and vanish. Animal sense is a threat. Tend not to hang around. You hear that? Jesse, come in, over. This thing that we're looking for, maybe it's always been here. Those are just stories, Tony. We've been telling them around here for a long time. What if there's something wrong about these ones? You really think there's a monster in the woods, Tony? Okay. It's in the backyard. Anyone out there? 
Out there? Something lives in our woods. And it's looking for food. And it found us. Let's go! Tomatoes has that at 52 for critics and 36 crowd. Uh, it is available on Prime, Tubi, and uh, various other places to rent. It's directed by Jack Heller. Uh, he also directed Enter Nowhere and uh, Big Sean music videos. Tyler Hissel is the writer. He wrote an episode of Wayward Pines, uh, Safari, episode of Low. Uh, but the actor, Kevin Durand, you've probably seen him in something. He's been in 11 episodes of Lock and Key, 46 episodes of The Strain, Winter's Tale, uh, Real Steel, the 2010 Robin Hood, the very underrated 310 to Yuma, Wild Hits, Smoke and Aces, and 21 episodes of Dark Angel. Mm. He's been around. Also had Lucas Haas, who's in Inception, Witness, Mars Attacks. Uh, the Revenant, seven episodes of the A Wonderful Righteous Gemstones, Alpha Dog, Leap of Faith, and Lady in White. Of course. <laughs> God damn. Uh, Bianca Kalik, who is in Halloween Resurrection, Bring It On, Ten Things I Hate About You, where she played the coffee girl. A hundred episodes of Rules of Engagement, 13 episodes of Boston Public, and hey, eight episodes of Dawson's Creek. And then there's uh, Nikki Dimitri, who you might know from Stakeland or We Are What We Are, and having one of the studliest manly pictures on IMDb for his photograph there. Very nice. Uh, this is an okay film. The uh, crew is taking down trees, and suddenly they disappear. You've got the foreman yelling back for everybody to respond. It's time to go. We're done, and nobody answers. Oh, what might have happened to them? Well, some unseen critter attacks them. And you don't get to see that. You see some of the aftermath. You don't know what is down. This small town, though, no. I got to tell you, you know, there's a... An odd similarity to a town like this, <laughs> to this small yeah. town. It, it felt very potentially Cubs End looking. Uh, this is an incredibly well acted movie. The actors in here are all good. They're all giving their all. And despite my sarcasm about the director, it's decently directed. the The problem is, it's. I don't know if I wanted to be a drama or a horror movie. So they continue on with this sheriff's kid spotting something in the backyard, uh, is not able to find anything. But the next morning they go outside and there are huge, giant, strange footprints walking into the backyard and then down the street. And as the sheriff follows these down the street, you can see everybody from inside the town is outside looking at these muddy footprints, trying to figure out what, what possibly made them. As they go into the woods, eventually the tracks disappear. So rumors start to fly, of course, as the mystery deepens. Uh, there is a deep side story where the lead of dealing with the loss of a child that happened six months before the movie's timeline. The, that death kind of covers colors everything that happens in the movie and does help make it a deeper story than it would have been other words. It's not a waste. It's well used, which is where that am I a drama or a horror movie kind of falls in line. The sheriff gets a call to come out and check out somebody's stable. And again, he sees something. Um, there definitely is something there. The next morning when they find giant claw marks all over the barn. And uh, all you see is shots of legs running away. And it uh, looks decent. You know, it's not a uh, super creature, but it's good. Um, 
the people of the town are so dramatic towards the sheriff of not figuring everything out and every, having everything solved immediately. Uh, the whole world apparently is his fault at this point, and uh, that gets a little old. They have several scenes of that. They finally realize, you know what, this is something's going on, and it's kind of a cryptid tale, like a cryptozoic creature. Uh, so once they start to realize what it is, they all flash or flash themselves, stash themselves in the local church for the final uh, battle with the creature. What do you think will happen? Will he reunite with his wife and move back in with his son, his still alive son? <laughs> Uh, will all these questions be answers? Will we ever actually see this damn creature? Uh, you know what? <laughs> yeah, you, you will. It's a pretty. It's actually a pretty good creature by the time you finally see it. <laughs> Takeaway quote from the movie: "Worrying never added a day to anyone's life." Put that on a napkin. You're good. Good to remember. This. The tagline for it is "Evil runs. Evil's roots run deep," which is fine. Um. Yeah, <laughs> it's got a uh, odd drawback or plus to the movie, depending on how you watch it. Uh, it is heavily color filtered. Um, I think there's deep and strange choices too. The the day is blue, so it's I guess they're going for maybe winter, but it seems like hold on, you're going for day for night. What is this blue cast you've got on everything? And it's inside and outside. Um, sometimes they go to yellow inside and as the movie evolves, the colors kind of fade away. So it's very obviously a very real choice. So I'm not quite sure what that choice was, but it is interesting filmmaking. Something, something was going on there. Uh, it does get incredibly melodramatic near the end, but, uh, that's sort of what it was leading to. So it wasn't a terrible thing. Um, the Jack Heller directed the film saying he included a never be seen never before seen monster drawn from various pieces of American folklore. It was not too far off actually. It's a fairly original, nice looking creature. It's a little, you know, it's CGI, so that is a drawback. The movie was shot in 20 days. Uh the screenplay for this movie, originally titled The Trees was on the 2009 Hollywood blacklist. Uh, so it was well written. It, it's kind of a, I hesitate on the movie because it was good, but it feels like it could have been so much better. Uh, the acting was all good. The directing was good. The writing was good, but it just sat on that edge of, you could really have made a classic film, but you made a pretty good movie. So I agree more with the critics. 52 is about right. 30 is a little harsh, but um, I would say, yeah, oh, it's also based on a something that happened called the Devil's Footprints in 19th century England. Mysterious hoof-like uh, footprints appeared in the snow and um, ran along for 40 to 100 miles, depending on who you talk to. Uh, prints appeared to pass through walls and over roof rooftops, making a perfectly straight line. And nobody knows to this day what what it was or how it was done. Dark is the yes. night. Okay, Eric, you came in under your time too. I'm turning off the buzzer. Sorry, dark was the night. <laughs> dark was the night, huh? And what what did you watch that on? Probably Prime. It's also on TV <laughs> and for rent. So it's a hmm. variety of places. When you started. Uh, describing the film, I was like, oh yeah, I started watching this and I did not finish it. Uh, is it just, is the creature supposed to be something or just something oh, we've yeah. never seen before? Oh, I see what you mean. No, I don't. No, I think it's, he took that idea from that English event and just went through the idea of this, the uh, footprints and then built the creature from a variety of different cryptids that already existed. It's mm. definitely okay, so it's not, not a uh, Bigfoot or anything. Right. No, no, definitely not. <laughs> and you said the creature design, when you finally get to see it, is pretty cool. It's neat. I, mean, it, I wish it was a little more practical, but it's still pretty good. Uh, at least it's interesting mm -hmm. and uh, 
pretty um, pretty good ballsy uh, battle at the end, which is well done. Very cool. Okay, Very I am fun. putting ten minutes, and I won this time, you guys. Oh, because I chose from 1983, the Dead Zone. You've been in a coma, Johnny. For how long? Five years. The house is burning. Your daughter's in the house. It's not too late. You're the talk of the town. Because I got my head bashed in and I'm still here to talk about it. Because you have the power of second sight. I don't know whether it's true or not, these psychic powers of yours. I'm at my wit's end, John. I could use your help. It has to do with these murders we've been having. Castle Rock Killer. I saw his face. Just thought I'd stop by here on my way to the U.S. Senate. Greg Stilson. He's dangerous. If you could go back in time before Hitler came to power, knowing what you know now, would you kill him? I would kill him. You'd never get away alive. It doesn't matter. I'm not crazy, you know. Those headaches are getting worse, aren't they? As the visions grow stronger and more powerful, so the body weakens. God has seen fit to bless you with this gift. You should use it. Bless me! Not only can you see the future, I can change it. Well, we could have done a could have done a Stephen King show here if Eric had just gotten yes. with the program. Yeah, sure. So close, so close. This had a budget of ten million dollars and a box office of twenty one million. Rotten Tomatoes critics give it eighty nine percent, and the audience gives it seventy seven percent. Directed by, and for some reason I always forget this, David Cronenberg. Thirty eight credits, weird. including. Videodrome, Scanners, The Fly, Dead Ringers, A History of Violence, and Eastern Promises. Written by Jeffrey Bohm, who has 18 credits, uh, including Inner Space, The Lost Boys, Indiana Jones, and The Last Crusade, Lethal Weapon 2 and 3, and 27 episodes of The Adventures of Briscoe County Jr. And it is based on the novel by Stephen King. You know, there was a good run there of adaptations that kind of almost ends with this movie um carrie salem's lot the shining creep show and then in 83 uh cujo and christine and the dead zone this stars christopher walken who has 143 credits including the deer hunter brainstorm communion the prophecy sleepy hollow and nine episodes of severance just recently also starring Brooke Adams, who has 70 credits, including Shockwaves, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, and Sometimes They Come Back, which is another Stephen King. Uh, Tom Skerritt is in this. He has 171 credits, including Alien, Poltergeist 3, Top Gun, Space Camp. Uh, Herbert Lom, who has 114 credits, including Journey to the Far Side of the Sun, Mark of the Devil, Murders in the Rue Morgue, but he will always be Commissioner Dreyfus in the Pink Panther movies to me. And then finally, Martin Sheen is in this, 261 credits, including Badlands, Apocalypse Now, The Final Countdown, Firestarter, The Believers, uh, 94 episodes of Grace and Frankie, which I did not know he was in. I'm going to assume you both have seen The Dead Zone. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this is a pretty straightforward adaptation of, you know, arguably one of King's most straightforward stories. There's a lot left out, which is fine. It hits all the important beats, tells the story in three acts. So in the small town of Castle Rock, we meet Johnny Smith and his fiance, Sarah. They are both teachers at the local high school and they are on a date at a carnival. And while he's on the roller coaster, he starts getting a severe headache, like worse than a migraine. And um, so the big night of him staying over and them consummating their relationship must be delayed. Sarah wants him to stay, but he's having a really bad time with a headache, and he leaves, telling her that some things are worth waiting for. Unfortunately, he gets into a very bad auto accident on the way home, 
and uh, he blacks out. And when we see him next, he's in the hospital and he wakes up, which comes as quite a shock to the nurse who is attending him because he's been in a coma for five years. Uh, he is devastated to learn that Sarah has moved on and met and married another man. And he feels there's no need to really go on, but he's too weak to even do anything about it because he can't walk after being bedridden for five years. Um, one day, as the nurse is attending him, he uh, grabs her by the wrist and starts having these super real visions of being trapped in a burning bedroom with a young girl. He tells the nurse, Amy needs your help. Uh, Amy is the daughter's name, but there's no reason Johnny would know that. Johnny tells her the house is burning and her daughter is in the house, but it is not too late. So the nurse rushes home to find her house in flames, but her daughter is being rescued by firefighters just as she arrives home. Uh, Johnny's doctor, Herbert Long, convinces him that it's time to start living again and he begins physical therapy and also strikes up a pretty close friendship with the doctor. When he shakes his hand one day, he gets another psychic flash, this time of the doctor as a young boy in uh, sometime during wartime uh, when he was separated from his mother who was killed. But Johnny tells him that she wasn't killed and she thought her little boy was killed. She ended up in America under a new Americanized name and married a very nice man. Uh, and it turns out that Johnny's right, but the doctor, who is in his 60s, can't bring himself to introduce himself to his elderly mother after so many years. So that's pretty much the first part of the movie. Uh, the second one starts with Johnny back in, moving back in with his father. His mother has died. And rumors of his abilities have started to circulate. So a few days later, Sheriff Bannerman, which is Tom Skerritt, swings by and asks Johnny if he'll help them out by checking out a crime scene. Uh, it turns out that Castle Rock has a serial killer, and Johnny is brought to the actual body of his latest victim, and when he touches the girl, he does see the killer, and he recognizes him as the deputy that was just talking to them. But when they turn to question him, the deputy is gone. Um, what follows is a pretty intense chase scene, where the deputy kills himself in a very gruesome scene, but he is then shot by the killer's mother, and uh, Bannerman has to kill her. I'm sorry, uh, Johnny is shot by the killer's mother. So after his brush with death again, he decides to move out to a remote cabin where he won't have to deal with people anymore. And then he's kind of talked into helping a man by giving his introverted son private tutoring lessons. And this guy is very, very wealthy. Um, one time while Johnny is there, there is a man who's running for state senator, Greg Stilson. And Johnny meets him and takes an instant disliking to him. He's a very charismatic man, though, and he's got the people all riled up and looking for someone who can make change. So he's probably going to get elected. Uh, Johnny pisses off the father of the kid he's been tutoring by having a vision of the guy's son and his friends on a hockey team breaking through the ice and drowning, and so Johnny is fired. Uh, the kid is freaked out enough that he doesn't play, but then several other kids do die, just as Johnny saw. And this is really important because Johnny saw the boy drowning in his vision, so it turns out not only can he see the future, he can change it. So the third part of the movie is what happens when he bumps into Stilson again at a rally and shakes his hand and he gets a vision of Stilson several years in the future where he's giving the order to launch nukes at the Soviet Union. So he makes a very bold decision that he's going to have to kill Greg Stilson before he can get elected. Will Johnny be able to follow through on his plan to assassinate Stilson at one of his rallies knowing he himself will not make it out alive? Will we get an absolutely perfect scene of Martin Sheen being the slimiest <laughs> asshole politician ever and using Sarah's young son as a human shield when Johnny comes for him? <laughs> and will Johnny be able to change the future this time when the world needs it most? Uh, if you guys haven't seen this movie, uh, you need to see it. And if you have, I think you need to give it another rewatch. It is so good. Um, Eric in film school, Tom Skerritt was one of our teachers yeah. and I had him sign my copy of Alien and MASH, but I really wish I had had him sign The Dead Zone. I just completely forgot he was in it. Uh, Walken is not only mostly normal in this film, considering everything his character has gone through, he's also very likable and uh, quite handsome in some scenes, which always comes as a shock to me when we're talking about him. Um, let's see, I'm getting close to my time. I've got some trivia, but... Uh, I really love Martin Sheen in this. He's a pretty big star and he tackles this character uh, and he doesn't fuck around. He gives it 100%. It's a much smaller role than in the novel where we get to see him coming up early on. Um, and I want to get into the trivia. Bill Murray was Stephen King's choice for the part of Johnny. Hmm. And... In 83, I think that would have been a very different movie. <laughs> mm -hmm. <Yeah. laughs> um, 
The gazebo where the murder took place was built for the film and was later donated to the town of Niagara-on-the-Lake, Ontario, where it was filmed. Town officials originally objected to the building of the gazebo, but Cronenberg told them it would be a temporary and easily destroyed. Uh, but then the town ended up loving it, and it is now a favorite spot for wedding photographs. Sure. And here's the one controversial thing. Um, director David Cronenberg fired a 357 Magnum loaded with blanks just off camera to make Smith's to make Smith's flinches seem more involuntary. This was uh, Christopher Walken's own idea, but it still seems like you know, boy, that's some that's some heavy duty shit for a movie. Mm. Uh, I'm not sure why this movie doesn't get brought up very often when they talk about best adaptations. I think this is really solid. I like this movie much better than The Shining. And I think, you know, if you, if you just drop in that first chunk of flicks that are based on his books, this one is, yeah, this one is right up there for me. Beat my time, turning my timer off. Nice. Ooh, three for three. No kidding. I've, I've got to rewatch this movie. This yeah. is a, it's been, it's been a while. I think I, I watched it during some kind of binge in, I don't know, 2014 or something. So I, I really need to check it out. Um, I know we were talking about snow and there was some question as to whether there's snow in this movie. And I didn't realize that the entire movie takes place during winters. So it's snow on the ground <laughs> everywhere. Nice. Uh, yeah, yeah, I that's why I was saying if even if you have seen it, do yourself a favor and watch it again. It's really a solid flick. And I'm guessing because it doubled its budget, that was probably how Cronenberg was able to push a little higher into the uh the directing realm that he got. Yeah. Yeah, and Canada just loves their actual artists and will give them actual money too. So uh, there's yeah, that. Right, right, right. <laughs> It's kind of weird to think that um, right after, well, so when he was offered this, this I think is right before Dune, or maybe it's right after Dune, 83, because he was originally offered Return of the Jedi oh, and right. then turn, yeah. turned it down to do Dune. So it must have been right before this. I don't know. <laughs> uh, that was my movie, The Dead Zone. Nice. Okay, guys. I think cool. that I have uh, the choice for the next subtopic. Yes. Yes, you do. And I'm going to do us all a favor because, Vanessa, you're mm -hmm. going to explode any minute. Also, <laughs> I wanted to do <laughs> with with life and goodness. I mean, yeah, there's that. <laughs> so that means at, at some point we're going to get the call that says, hey, guess what, guys? I'm not doing an episode this week. So I'm, yes. I'm thinking ahead to, uh, you know, a possible uh, guest host at some point, and we don't want to mm -hmm. throw a a topic at them just last minute. But also, I don't know if you guys remember, I wanted to do, I wanted to do November, and I got shut down, mm -hmm. and then I was like, I wanted to do Vampuary, and it was like, well, we're gonna only have two weeks left in it, and then I was gonna say, you know, let's do Vampuary in February, but. We know we've got the Charles Dexter Awards coming up. Oh, yeah. And so for the next several weeks, we're doing vampires. <laughs> and whoever our guest oh, host is, is doing vampires. And it's going to be vampuary, vampruary. <laughs> Vampirific. Oh, my. <laughs> it's it's, hey, it's going to be a deal. Some other than vampires. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's vampuli. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'll we're doing that time. Perfect. Um, this is the part where I say thanks to everybody who's liking and sharing our posts, who's uh, calling the Strange Neons Radio hotline that I forgot to bring in here, who's <laughs> talking on the Strange Neons Radio We should just radio flash it on talk. the screen right now, we Eric, on uh, YouTube. There you go. Just... We should. Listen, you guys, I'm not <laughs> quite myself. Uh, <laughs> and who's especially throwing money our way either in uh, a monthly subscription donation that you can do on PayPal or with the thing we like to call value for value, which is if you get some kind of value out of this, you just turn around and 
give us some kind of value back. We can't tell you how much that value is. You have to decide that. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. I think that's it, guys. I'm excited to finally get into vampires. Yeah, <laughs> finally. We never have talked about this ever before. So, You know what? I don't need that kind of negativity in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm excited. I have a list of at least like 10, 15 vampire movies that I'd be happy to check out. So whether or not I actually get to check out any of them, we shall see. But uh, <laughs> I think it's a great topic choice. So good job. Good. Thank you. I need this kind of. Yeah. This kind of uh, adoration. Validation. But much better than Video Nasties, I'll tell you that. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, All right, guys, find I some believe. Vampires on Video Nasties. Maybe. If you haven't already <laughs> watched them, Eric. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Well, all right, guys, all right. feels like a, uh, a short episode, but that's how it goes. Sometimes they're long, sometimes they're short. Uh, we'll be back in seven days. We are talking vampires. See you next Thursday. Transportation and other considerations for Strange Eons Radio produced by Pan Am Airline. When you think of traveling, think of Pan Am. You can't beat the experience. Guests of Strange Eons Radio stay at Econo Lodge Everett. It's an easy stop on the road, if you know what we mean. Strange Eons Radio is recorded live in front of a studio audience. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider leaving us a positive review on your favorite podcast app. Sit, Ubu, sit. Rough shit you will see. Um...